We finally reached the Orbi Monastery. Not a very fast way to get here. I did have to come all the way from... Way of the shit over here. Seeing as a... There doesn't seem to be a teleporter. Wait, waypoint undiscovered. There is one here. Damn it, Alex. You buffoon. Alright, but whatever. Point is, we're at the Orbi Monastery. And we're gonna go find out what's why these the Abbot has not responded to Lora's uh, questions, concerns, or warnings. But we got corpses. We got spooters. Well, pretty sure this is a side quest, but check it out. In my dreams, a big oh, hey, motherfucker! All right, that was quite rude. It's not a way for me to read that again. Oh, I can abandon it. In my dreams, a figure bathed in light named Izoth came and spoke words of great power. I have written them down and placed the scroll at Kutun's Reach, where only the faithful will find it. Pick the first trail marker at the Graveyard of Ships. Alright, well, I'm like, I may as well grab it. After all, it wasn't scroll form. Message from the abbot who wants to place bets that this is a response to Lorath and it got intercepted. Lorath Na, how bizarre it is to hear from you. Your charming apprentice arrived just this morning with equally disturbing news, but he made no mention of you. Am I to assume you did not send him? Please, join us at Orbe as soon as you are. Damn. Sounds like they got fucked up. Though his tone sounds a little off. I'm actually skeptical. I, I feel like the... So, a theme that keeps on occurring in this game is it seems like all of the characters who were assigned to go speak with have in some aspect to their being or their past a dark secret or a dark sense of belonging or need or drive now even though we saw those corpses here I, I don't know just the way the abbot is voice acted in that message I feel like he's fallen to hatred is anyone here Murder! Murder in the sacristy! Mmm, murder in the sacristy. What about the others? The elbow! Do as I say! Lock the doors. What about the abbot? Dude, the fucking abbot, he's a traitor! He's fallen, he's corrupt! Maybe he's touching all the new priests. Damn, that was like a proper shriek. He's here! I can't do the voice, not while I'm <laughs> recovering. Crusader School. Oh, cool. Glad I was kind of exploring a bit before I searched around. Or rather, bum rushed it to the objective. Mechanically sealed door. So all these doors are about to be sealed. This is giving me some like Diablo 3 PTSD where the um 
I'll try, dude. I'll try. Damn. Ooh, late. I see that journal. Anyway, yeah. Uh, D3 vibes. When the skeletal magisters would just, like, pop out of the walls in these archways. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm going to get attacked. I was so excited when I walked into the sacristy that day. Finally, my turn to enter the archive. Now, I can't give anything to forget what I thought. I wonder if I'm in the sacristy right now, or if it's much further back. Hey, fucker, take off. Gotta try and loot all these scholars as I see their bodies. You never know which one might actually have a lore book on him. Wait, are these phantoms? The ones talking right now? I think the phantoms are the ones talking. Yeah, see I looted that body. Phantom spawn. I don't think I'm hearing people talking. I think I'm hearing the echoes of what occurred. Not a Haratra, yep. a man, a devil. Tormented scholar. Not a Haradra, not a man. Referring to Elias, of course. Damn you, Mabbit! Why did you let him in? So they're blaming the Abbot for getting Elias in. But. I'm not, I'm not always sure that the abbot didn't fall either. I feel like the abbot like directly fell. And there's why you're looting all these things. Slightly fear the dangers of our scholarship, but ignorance of evil offers little protection from it. Our insights have proven invaluable to paladins, paladrim, and angels alike. In the fight against the darkness. So the Orbite Monastery was not even part of the Horadrim. Kind of just like a neutral third party. What did that text say again? Paladins, Horadrim, and Angels of Light. So they did serve the light. As far as they were concerned. But since there are scholars first and foremost, I could see them being tempted to evil by knowledge. And I got a feeling that the. Uh, ooh! Sister! Oh, that was part two. So let's see. Commissioned during the time of troubles. The Orbe Archive once served to codify heresies for the Inquisition. Since then... God damn it! The Orbe Archive once served to codify heresies for the Inquisition. Since then, the Archive has expanded to the study of all evils, restricted to only the most devout scholars of Zacharum. Has expanded to the study of all evils though restricted to the church. Raving monk, unto evening, unto evening, I shall keep it safe. And then... Well, there's our monk. Magically sealed door. The abbot opened the door, and the pale devil smiled. He took the forbidden knowledge. Oh. It's all right. I've cleared the way out. Can you walk? 
There is no way out. What knowledge remains must never leave. And to evening I shall keep it safe. And into the night he left there. He's gonna attack me. You must protect the archive. Yep, he thinks I'm here to take the knowledge. It's kind of am, but you know, for a good deed. Just because of what his master was doing with it. It's 476 gold. I should run back with that. It's half thousand boats. Ah, oh, the sacristy. I'm pretty sure one of the bodies actually had a name, so I'm gonna try to pay attention to that. Just hit me. Whew, okay. Well, the search for bodies goes on. Popping that thing loose. Oh, okay, I'm out. following the blood probably is progress and then his body was just right there alright oh I know that going north is likely to be progress but we're gonna look for bodies to east now. To the yesin. Wow, no bodies. This is a bit surprising. I suppose we're a oh, hold up, a Zacharum statue. It has the litany of Orbi Monastery. A litany of. From morning, my eyes were opened, and I saw the coming darkness. So as long as they stand in the light, they can see the imminent darkness. Search for the habit still.
Let's see if we should. This is a dude. Yep. And this should be it. Oh, hold up. Until evening, I shall keep it safe and into the night hereafter. And that's what the raving monk was saying. You who would seek to know darkness, kneel before the light, speak the words of the litany, and accept our holy burden. Well, really, I already found them, except for this one. Through the day, I am prepared to accept this burden of knowledge. Alright, that's interesting. So, in the morning, you awaken in the light, where you can see the imminent darkness. You spend your time throughout the day getting ready for the horrors of the evening, or the horrors of knowledge. And once you have that knowledge, rather than succumb to it, you uh, you safeguard it. You keep it within yourself. You don't share it. You contemplate over it. You know, kind of like a monk would. From morning, my eyes were opened, and I saw the coming darkness. Through the day, I have prepared to accept the burden of knowledge. Unto evening, I shall keep it safe and into the night hereafter. Whoa, they're burning the knowledge! Oh, the sacrilege! What the fuck, Abbot? No, I deserve to burn. With the rest of it. Where is Elias? Gone. He said the ruin of sanctuary was imminent and only I could help. He is going to summon a lesser evil. He took all he needed and then my scholars. He murdered them. Ah, <laughs> uh, what was wrong? <laughs> Whoa, the Eidolon of Orbe. Orbe. So it has walling abilities. Creates a blood vortex. So that vortex does damage. Facing away from me. Taunted, not getting facing away. It has a spirit dash, so it's not like too many of my charges in. No, fuck it, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, I go blind, I take lots of damage. Good to know. Does it seem to be summoning ads? So, so far so easy. Maybe I can sink the, um, oh, hey, hey, damn. I'm trying to say, maybe I can sink the, um, my dots in. As soon as it teleports, it seems like a good, a good time to do it. Still no ads, okay. I'm incredibly surprised. That's on me, I got a little too comfortable. Alright, he just inflicted some massive damage. Maybe he does damage based on how many of his bones are still up. No, but he does do damage. If you're standing next to the walls. The whole of human knowledge shall be shared among the children of Lilith. And no secret shall be kept from them. And the liars and learned thieves of the world shall perish in their regret. 
So Elias is getting the strong Abaddon vibes from Warhammer, where um, in the Warhammer setting, the Emperor tried to abolish religion and the worship of gods and spiritual entities. And it's ironic because the Emperor himself is currently worshipped as a god, hence the god of mankind, Emperor of Mankind. And that's strictly due to Abaddon essentially penning a Bible about how... No, not Abaddon. Uh, Logar. But replace every instance of me saying Abaddon with Logar. Uh, Logar penned this Bible equating the Emperor to a god. And now that's what the people are using to worship him. And of course, you know, he fell when he found out that there were actual chaos gods. Though, you know, that's up for its own debate, whether or not they're actually gods or just manifestations. Um, in any case... In any case, Elias gives me some major Logar vibes, because we know that he was incredibly pursuant toward acquiring more knowledge and understanding in learning about the world. And similar to what happened with Logar is he... Unlike the word bearer chapters who are actively like spreading the word of chaos, Logar's whole gimmick was he found out the truth that these godlike beings existed and he simply wanted to share that that knowledge existed, that it was true, it was a fact. And I can see Elias discovering that humans are the spawn of demons and angels and that ultimately, you know, Lilith is trying to take us into the fold while angels essentially want nothing to do with us. And that Hell wants to use us. I could see him being dedicated to wanting to share that information. So for Elias, like, again, Elias and Lilith are doing these things from a place of moral righteousness without realizing that what they're doing is, you know, morally evil. Or they realize it and they just simply don't care. Uh, so, yeah, the the themes of corruption in this game are utterly fascinating. So I have to go meet with Lorith and Ked Bardu and let him know what the hell's going on. All right, time to inform Lorith that Elias totally messed up the Ordai Monastery. What did he take? Scrolls from the Forbidden Archive. He has the means to summon a lesser evil. Him what? Which bloody one? Where? Oh, we don't know, of course. Elias could cover the steps in blood, but a lesser could wipe out the continent. Jesus. Or worse. Come. Elias's pet demon is inside. Pray it leads us to him. A lesser demon can destroy a continent? Fuck, man. That's a weird part, though. I thought all of them were defeated or vanquished after Diablo 3. I don't remember what, fully what happened with the Black Soul Stone. Because they were all trapped inside there. But you get the three prime evils and the four lessers. Duriel, Andariel, Belial, and Asmodan. I wonder which one he could be interested in summoning. <sighs> Perhaps you are too young. The prime evils you should know. Diablo, Mephisto, and Baal. The lessers are their rotten kin. Asmodan, Belial, Andariel, and Duriel. Each of them has ravaged humankind since the dawn of history. And they will gladly do so again. Wow. Mm. Let's see if it's about pain versus emotional pain. Could be in Dariel if they want to like wound people's spirit, their emotions. Could also be Asmodan so that they could convince people to be beautiful in sin. That was Lilith's, you know, such her opening opus is be beautiful in sin. So she could be wanting to summon the Lord of Sin. He asked me endless prying questions. Frankly, I should be more concerned about your past. 
trusting one so connected to Lilith is quite a risk on my part. And one I do not take lightly. Well, we should. It was protecting that fool, Genma. <sighs> this is Elias's work. But where is he? The answer lies in the stomach. <laughs> Oh yeah, Lord. When we met Lord, he was. This is delicate. A soft noble's hand. Elias would have to feed this thing with more than fancy boots. That's someone's son. Or daughter. We should burn demons. This is wrong. Ah, this medallion bears the crest of the ruler of the royal house of Gulran. Former ruler. Obviously. That's enough, old man. The dead deserve respect. The dead deserve nothing when the living are in danger. Now Guran has a new ruler, and we have Elias to thank for it. The dead may be worthless to you, but that medallion could bring peace to those two mourning. Fine. If we are to find Elias, then we must also travel to Guran. Meet me there, and be swift about it. So that the house of Ghoul Run was ransacked. Sounds like it was Elias doing. Most people were not aware that that was the case. Now I'm very much with Lorith on this one. People gotta like stop getting in the way of science. Um, and that was pretty cool to see actually being performed because when we first meet Lorith, it's after the fact that he's been dissecting animals, trying to understand where the source of their corruption is coming from. And now he's dealing with, you know, greater demons, which you can find out by their recent sacrifices and where they might have come from. So, it looks like we're gonna be making a deep trek south to potentially avenge the former house of Gulran. Well, that was actually a uh, very lore-heavy ch chapter. It was fun going into the uh, Orbi Monastery and kind of like getting to understand more of Lilith and Elias's angle. Especially Elias's understanding that it's... <laughs> Again, you know, these themes of corruption, they come up with every single character in this game. With Elias, it's a drive for knowledge, for information, and toward understanding things. And he's so intent on understanding the way the world works that the moment he learned that the that sanctuary is essentially demon and angel crafted, uh, recognizing, you know, that obviously Anarius is kind of a sack of shit who doesn't care about the world, is only Concern is essentially the destruction of hell. Seeing as a ceasefire was impossible, his next, Elias's genuine next best solution would be to go to Lilith and be like, hey, yo, what gives? And after summoning her, as we see in the opening cutscene, she's very much intent on spreading the word of, hey, take back your world. The the burning hells don't deserve sanctuary, and the heavens don't deserve sanctuary. This is your world. I can easily see that being a message that somebody like Elias can jive with, because as far as Lilith is concerned, neither one of them is doing anything wrong, and Elias, of course, just wants to know more, so he's along for the journey. So, I'm very interested to see how the ultimate confrontation with Elias will pan out and I'm ultimately going to do my best to reserve moral judgments until the end of the game well in the meantime y'all know the drill keep it sleazy keep it simple hit that subscribe button if you actually do enjoy these plot narrative analyses peace